Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I've got another brand new add-on set from Art Impressions for the front porch. And this is called the Front Porch Harvest Set. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start off with the Front Porch Harvest Set and I've stamped it onto some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I used the VersaFine Onyx Black ink to do my stamping. Now we'll start with the color sand to color in our pumpkins. And these markers I'm using are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. And then we'll switch to the bright yellow and blend these two together. So I'm using a blender pen here to do my blending. And you could also use a water brush here as well because these are a water-based marker. So this front porch harvest set is part of the front porch set collection. So this is an add-on set. So you do need the front porch in order to create the entire scene that we're creating today. And that is a separate stamp and die set. So I'll be showing you that here shortly. Now I am listing the colors we're using as we're going along here in the upper left hand corner. And I did speed up the coloring quite a bit so that it wouldn't take too, too long, even though there is a lot of coloring here today. Now I'm switching to that deep vermilion to do these little apples. And that's one of the newer colors in the Zig collection. And I did a few videos on some of these newer colors it's called the Set A Collection, and again, I'll list and link all the products I'm using today down below and also on my blog. And I did use the Smoky Yellow to start with there, and then adding some shadows with the Evergreen. Now let's go ahead and color in the basket. I'm going back to that sand color. And then I'll add a little bit of the mid-brown to create a little bit of a shadow here. And I'm just going to pull that in from either side and just leave that center part the lightest. So you can see all the cute little elements that you get here. Now for the corn stalk, I'm just using the mustard color. And I'll come back in and shadow, add some shadows with that color. But you will see a little bit later on, I'm going to come in with some yellow just to brighten up the tips of these little stalks, just to give it a little bit more of a highlight. And again, you've got all these cute little images. We're going to take that little scarecrow and we're going to pop it inside the door of our front porch. But you could certainly sit that up on top of something. And also keep in mind that all of these sets interact with each other so there's quite a few different front porch sets available and i have done videos on a couple of them one was the farmhouse set and one was the easter set and i will list and link those down below for you and also on the blog as well so now to do my sunflowers, I'm going to use a combination of colors here. And that will be the mid-brown, sand, deep vermilion, and yellow. And so I'll just kind of blend. I'll do the scent. For the center, I'm using the sand and the mid-brown. Then for the outer edges, I'll use the yellow and the deep vermilion on the petals of these flowers. And, and then I'll just add a little touch of color here on these little berries. And then for these leaves, I'll use the smoky yellow and the evergreen. And I did decide to add a little pop of yellow there. So now let's switch to the smoky teal and we'll do this little thankful sign. And I'll add some color kind of around the edges. And then we'll just kind of pull that in towards the middle, keeping that middle part the lightest. And now using that same color, I'll do this little bench. Now I kind of picked a little bit more of a muted fall color palette with the smoky teal. I just thought that would be a really pretty color to add in here. 
and then we've got the oranges and the deep red vermilion so it's going to be a really pretty palette when we're done here so again i'll just add some shadows here and there now if you get too much ink on your blender you can just scribble that off onto your scrap paper and then go back to your cardstock and you can also remove ink if you get too much you can just remove it from your image and then scribble that onto your scrap paper until you get the look that you're going for. Now I'm adding that same smoky teal to the little overalls here on my scarecrow. And then I'll just start repeating a lot of these colors here just to tie everything together now. So I'm going back to that deep red vermilion for the hat. Again, keeping that center part the lightest. Here you can see I'm just removing some ink there. I'm just grabbing it and scribbling it onto my scrap paper. And then I've got the blossom pink to do this little patch here. And then I've got the beige to do the face and the hands. And I'll also use that down on his little shoes here as well. Now I probably didn't need to color in all the bottom part here because he is going to be tucked inside the door. So you may just want to color those areas that are going to show. It's up to you. I usually end up coloring all my images and then kind of deciding what I'm going to do once I have everything colored in. And then I had put a little yellow there on the hair. And then I'll use that smoky yellow and the evergreen again to do the little shirt here. Now let's go to this basket here. I'm going to use that sand color to do this little basket. And then I'll use that red vermilion on the handle. So now let's go back to the sand color and do this little plaque. And uh, all these little images just tie together so well. Now you could stamp multiples of these things as well. If you wanted to have a corn stalk on either side of the door. Um, the front porch set does come with lights, two lanterns that you could put on each side of the door along with the corn stalks. So you have a lot of options here as far as mixing and matching. So don't feel like you're just stuck with this one, uh, just stamping one of each. You could certainly stamp multiples. Now that was a little cluster of leaves that I just added some of those colors to, just a random grouping of the colors we've already used. And then we'll go ahead and do this little hanging item here. Again, using that smoky teal, I used a little bit of sand there on the, the little bow. And then I'll keep it mostly white by adding a little bit of the light gray here. But I don't want it to be too, too bright white. And then I did add a little bit of deep vermilion to the little berries on that as well. Which you'll see here in a second. So now you can see we have everything all colored in. And again, these images are just so sweet. So now... I'm going, here's where I mentioned earlier that I was going to go back with that yellow and just highlight that corn stalk a little bit better. I just thought it was a little bit dull looking, so that little pop of yellow will add a little highlight there. So now you can see everything's all set. So now here is the front porch set. And this is the set you would need to create all of your front porches. So this set comes with a coordinating die, and it also comes with several sentiments. It's got a little welcome mat, and it's got the, the lantern that I mentioned earlier. 
So these little sets, the one I'm showing you, the Front Porch Harvest, is a little add-on set. So now let's go ahead and stamp that front porch. Again, I'm going back to the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I've placed that in my Mini Misty to do my stamping. So now we'll grab the beige and the mid-brown, and I'll go ahead and color this in. And I'll meet you on the other side.
Okay, so now that we have that all colored in, I'm grabbing the coordinating die and I've got my post-it tape here. This is the one inch post-it tape and I'll just go ahead and temporarily tape this down and then I'll run it through my die cutting machine. And this will cut out the little windows here and it will also create a little interactive door. So that little door will open up. You can see that there, this is just so cute. So now I've got my images all set. Let's go ahead and create the panel for the card. So I went ahead and die cut the largest die. And now I'm gonna grab the, for the largest die and the next largest die from the A2 rectangle double stitch die sets. And then from Lawn Fawn, I'm going to be using the paper bag cardstock. This is a 100 pound weight. And all I wanna do with these two dies is just tape these together. I'm lining them up so that that smaller one is centered perfectly inside the larger one. And then I'll go ahead and tape these two together. Since I do want to cut a couple frames for my card, I want to make sure that they're exactly the same. So now I can go ahead and die cut that paper bag cardstock. And then I'll die cut this again out of some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. So we can set aside that inside piece that we cut out for another project. And then I went ahead, I actually die cut a few. I think I die cut three more of the white ones. And I glued those all together. And now we'll just glue this paper bag cardstock right on top of these. So this is gonna give us a nice thick embellishment. So it will really give us a nice frame for our card. So altogether, we have about four frames stacked up there. So now using my Ground Espresso Distress Oxide Ink, I'm going to go around all the edges here. I do want to take that white edge away. You could die cut all of your frames out of the paper bag cardstock. The only thing is I just didn't want to waste that much of the cardstock, so I used the white instead. So by using that ink, we can take away that white edge. So now let's grab that panel that we cut earlier. This will be for the base of our card here. And we're going to ink this up with this cloudy stencil from Lawn Fawn. And for ink, I'm using the Uncharted Mariner. And I, I'm just in love with this color. I've been using it a lot lately, but I just really like it. It ties together really well with that smoky teal color that we used on the front door. So what I'm going to use is my Hero Arts blending brush and the stencil, and I'm just going to turn this stencil around. On It has that cloudy pattern on all four sides, so you can just keep turning it and finding different areas of the stencil that you want to use. What I like to do is pat the ink onto the stencil and then push it up over the top of the stencil. And that gives me some nice light and dark areas on my clouds as well. So I'm going to continue this all the way down to the bottom of this panel. And now I've got another piece of cardstock here. This will sit at the bottom of our card. And I cut it the width of our card, which is four and a quarter inches. And then I just want it to come up to the top of that front porch. So that's about a half an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Now we can go ahead and color this in. And I'm going to use the Distress Oxide ink in the peeled paint. So again, I'm going back to that foam applicator tool and I'll just apply that color all over this little panel. And I'm putting a little extra color down at the bottom here. So that will sit on the bottom of our card here. And then our little front porch will sit right on top of that. So let's go ahead and die cut these images. I've got the coordinating dies. Again, I'm taping those down with that post-it tape and I'll run those through the die cutting machine. Now let's create the card base. This measures four and a quarter by 11 inches and I'm scoring it at five and a half inches. 
I'll just press that out with my bone folder. And this will be a top folding card. So let's go ahead and glue the cloudy panel right onto the front of the card. And this is the exact same size as our card. So I'm just making sure I line it up nice and straight. And then we've got that nice thick frame. We're going to go ahead and glue that down as well. Now I should have glued my grassy border down first and I didn't do that. So what I did was I just cut it down a little bit so it will fit right inside here. So either way will work just fine. So let's take the birds and bugs set from Art Impressions. This is another brand new set. I'll quickly color in the birds using sugared almond pink for the cheeks and the smoky teal for the body of the bird. And I did all three of these exact same the exact same way. And I'll just show you one of those here. And then I did the rest of those off camera. So now going back to that grassy border, here you'll see that I cut it down so it fits right inside that frame. I just cut off about a quarter inch from each side. I'm going to place that down there. And now you'll see that our little front door sits right on that grassy border. Now I'll add some glue here. And for glue, I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I want to make sure that I don't put any glue on that door because I do want it to open. It won't be opening and closing, but I am going to tuck that little scarecrow in there. So I do want it to be open for now. And now let's go ahead and tuck him in there. I'm going to glue him into place here. And now let's add all our other little elements. So I just played around with this until I kind of figured out where I wanted everything to be. Now you could certainly pop up some of these items or just glue them down flat, whatever you want to do here. I'm going to cut the handle off of this little plaque. We're not going to be using that today. So again, I'm just playing around with these little pieces here, just trying to decide where everything should go. And now I can finish gluing these down. I'll pop up the little bench. And that does end up covering the scarecrow's foot. So. Like I said earlier, I didn't necessarily need to color in the little feet there, but it was probably just as easy to color everything in all at once. So rather than hanging that little sign off the front door, I thought I would just lean it up there against that little bench. And then we've got that little thankful welcome wooden plaque there. And then we've got our beautiful sunflowers and then the little basket of apples. So this is just so cute. So now for the birds, I'm going to glue this one right at the very top of the porch here. And then I think I'll just go ahead and pop up these two. I've got plenty of room in there because again, that frame is nice and thick. So these will sit nicely inside that frame. And now I'm cutting a little strip of that foam mounting tape and I'm going to put it on the inside of that door just so that it looks like it's open but it won't flop around and you won't really be able to actually open it. I'll just give the illusion that you can open that door. So here's a closer look at the finished card. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.